Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to be setting up our January 2019 budget. And I'm going to be doing this in my Erin Condren Deluxe Monthly Planner. This is super exciting because this is the first budget that we'll be doing in this planner. Um, this uh, planner go does go from January to December. So it's a new year, it's a fresh start, and I'm super excited. So let's go ahead and get started. Now, the way I'm going to be setting up my 2019 budget planner is I am gonna be doing things a little bit differently, especially from what I did last year. So on this page here, I'm going to have a page solely dedicated to variable income and variable expenses. I'm still going to be tracking my expenses here. I'm going to be using the uh, Planner Kate budget stickers to do so. So here are all of my categories. And I love this, it's super colorful. <laughs> and then I'm still gonna put my debt balances over here in this like um, sidebar and I'll put in our pay dates and everything like that still. And then on this note page, I'm gonna do our weekly tracker that's checking in with our groceries, our gas, our entertainment money, my pocket money, um, unbudgeted items, that kind of stuff. And then I'm going to do our um, sinking funds and a transaction log over here. So. With the weekly budgets, I actually have, um, I ordered a Erin Condren notebook that should be shipped to me here pretty soon. And I'm going to have my weekly budgets in a completely separate notebook, I decided. That makes it really easy for my husband and I too, just to kind of do our rough drafts together of our budgets. Just having a notebook where it's just, it doesn't have to necessarily look pretty, it just has to be functional. So, I've got that on the way to me. And then in the back here, you know, I've got my Dave Ramsey baby steps, which I set up in a, a another video. And I'm going to be doing our, um, originally I had planned to doing our sinking funds back here. I'm no longer gonna be doing that. Um, I'm actually going to do our debt confession, which is all of our debts listed out from the smallest to the largest, everything we've paid off, when we paid it off, everything like that. And then I'm gonna break down each individual debt that we have left so we can track how much we've put towards principal, how much we've put towards interest. And then I have some other ideas that I'm still kind of like figuring out as we go. So let's go ahead and set up our January 2019 budget. So for today's budget, I'm gonna be using a rose gold January flag. This is a sticker sheet from Erin Condren. I also might be using some of these budget stickers. I'm not 100% sure yet, but I took them out just in case. I'm also going to be using this Erin Condren sticker sheet, which um, I have recently become completely obsessed with this pattern. I don't know what it is. I think it's just the combination of the navy with the rose gold is what I've been really liking. And then I kind of attribute like the blue color to January for whatever reason. You know how you kind of like associate red and green with December and pink with February. Like I feel like blue is just a really great January color. So I decided to use this sticker sheet for my January budget. Okay, so the first thing we're gonna do is we're going to lay out our washi. I think I'm gonna do it this way. And I'm just gonna line it up here at the top. Oop, got a little bubble in there. Let's fix that. Actually, I can just smooth it out. That works. Okay, awesome. So we've got that down. And then I'm going to put my January flag at the top. I seriously just love this color combination. I seriously, I don't know what it is, but I just feel like it looks really, really pretty. So I think that is good. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually break up our main source of income and variable source of income at the top here. So I'm gonna actually have two lines for income now instead of the one. So we're gonna start with our income source.
and we're gonna have the um, and then how do I want to line this up I'm trying to think I'll probably just do it try it kind of in the middle so I'll do main and variable and then I'm going to have the total income at the bottom here okay and I'm gonna grab my ruler and we're just going to draw a line going from this end here over and then also this right here and I'm going to lay down this little skinny washi strip right below this draw a line actually before I do that let's go ahead and I'll finish this in one second I want to kind of have my lines like match up so I'm gonna go ahead and put our expenses down and for our expenses this month I've got them all written down over here my little stickers and we're gonna have our February mortgage so we do pay next month's mortgage with the current month's income we do not have HOA this month just because of the way the weeks fall so um, we're gonna have our utilities which is actually just electricity so I might just put electricity and that's again just because of the way that the weeks fall and then we're gonna have Apple which includes Apple Music and iCloud storage we have our life insurance and this is for both my husband and I we have our auto insurance we have our internet We have our cell phones with T-Mobile. We have Hulu Live. We are putting a Costco budget back in. And I'll explain that in a second. We have our grocery. We have our um, gas. And I'll put um, maybe just car washes, gas and car wash. We're gonna do household. So we are budgeting household separately now. It's because I really just wanted to see um, exactly how much we spend separately on just food at the grocery store and household products at the grocery store it's kind of why i wanted to separate it out just to kind of get a better idea and then we have our family fun we have pocket money and for andrew i am going to separate these out as well as pocket money for me we have Maddie's commission money she can earn up to five dollars a week now for her commission and then we've got our debt which includes our minimum payments and our debt snowball 
We have our sinking funds. We have unbudgeted. And our total. Okay, so now that we have that in, we can go ahead and draw a line. So we're gonna draw a line from there. And then all the way to the bottom here. And then we're gonna have our estimate income. And our budgeted amount for our expenses. And then draw our line down again. And we'll have our actual amounts. And finally, we will have our over and under column. draw some lines to underline this up here. As well as, this is always just easier going this way. This line here to separate the totals. All right, cool. So that is our basic layout for our budget. Now, as far as income is concerned, we are estimating a total, and this is between my husband and I combined, $5,189.62. For variable, I am gonna put zero because I'm not 100% sure what that's gonna look like yet. So put zero for that, and that means that our total estimate income is $5,189.62. Okay, and then as far as our mortgage is concerned, $1,181.69. One and that's pretty much a set amount. Our mortgage did go down by, what is it, like 12 bucks, 13 bucks, something like that. So that was exciting. Electricity, I am going to budget $175. Hoping this will go down eventually. It did go up because we use the air conditioner a lot more than we should have in the summertime and we're on the budget plan. So it just like basically kicked this up by quite a lot actually. Um, but we've been trying to be better about the heat, like not using the heater as much in the winter time. So I'm hoping it'll even out. I don't know, we'll see. Okay, so for Apple Music and iCloud storage, we're at 868. For our life insurance, that total will be 6092. For our auto insurance, we'll be at $116 and 58 cents. I do eventually want to start just paying this annually because you do save some money by doing it that way. It's just, I think that's something that's gonna have to wait till we're you know officially out of debt and everything like that because any extra money we have right now is going to debt or sinking funds and that's a big chunk of change um, that we would have to pay in one go. It's oh, well over a thousand dollars. So we'll wait for that. And then $65 for internet, $130 for T-Mobile, 
Hulu Live will be $47.82. Our Costco budget, so I'm gonna do a monthly Costco run and I think I might share my monthly Costco haul videos with you guys. Let me know what you think about that if you think that you'd enjoy watching that kind of video. Um, there are some major changes we are making to our diet um, in the upcoming year. So my husband and I are trying to essentially eliminate meat besides like seafood, fish, things like that. So we're gonna be eating a lot more salmon, a lot more shrimp, and that is way cheaper and really good quality at Costco. Um, we're also going to be eating a lot more like nut butters and lower carb things. So Costco's got like coconut aminos, they've got cauliflower rice, they've got avocado oil, avocado mayo, like their cheese selection's great. So we want to fit Costco back into our budget in order to, you know, kind of accommodate for our new diet plans and things like that. So we are budgeting $300 per month for Costco. And that is like the max amount of what we want to spend. Our goal is to be under that, but that's what we're budgeting for Costco on a monthly basis. Now, I haven't decided if this is going to include paper products or not. I think it might because there are some things like, I think that this household budget is really just going to cover things that I might get at like fries, you know, um, like hand soaps and cleaners and just like those littler things. So this is gonna be a smaller budget. And then the Costco, I think will also include like toilet paper we love to get there, paper towels, laundry detergent, trash bags. Those are things that we don't have to get all of the time. We only get them every couple of months or so. Um, so yeah, I think that's the way we're gonna do it. It's gonna be kind of trial and error in the beginning. And then, um, you know, we'll figure it out as we go along and like get an idea of what our true like spending is like once we try to implement this in the first few months of 2019. For grocery, we're gonna do $80 per week and that's essentially just gonna cover produce. Um, we're planning on getting pretty much everything else at Costco. So um, there might be some little things that like they don't carry at Costco, like certain canned items and things like that. But for the most part, um, this budget primarily will just cover produce. So that total is $320 for the month of January because there are four weeks and we go based off of paydays. So for January, we've got four Fridays. So all of our weekly amounts are basically multiplied by four. And that's how I come up with these numbers, just so you guys know. And then for gas and car washes, we're budgeting 200 for gas and 20 for car washes. So that's gonna be 220. For household, we're doing $15 per week or $60 for the month. For family fund, we're budgeting $30 per week, which multiplied by four is $120 for the month. And then we've got our pocket money, which we're gonna get $20 each per week. So $80 for Andrew and $80 for me. And Madeline, she's getting $5 per week and there's four weeks. So that's $20 that we're going to take out. And she basically gets a dollar per chore I just made it really simple. I know that might seem steep <laughs> for her, a four-year-old for a chore, but I wanted to make it really simple and um, I've got like a bunch of quarters so I can break it out. Essentially what we're gonna do is we're gonna teach her to save 25% of what she earns and then she can spend 75% of what she earns. So she should be saving, if she does all of her chores, she should be saving $1.25 per week or $5 per month. Um, give or take, there's some week, some months, there's five weeks, and then she should be getting like 375 per week, something like that. So it's not like a ton of money. It's, I think, what is that even? I think 375 times four, it's $15 that she could earn. So, and she can use that for a toy or, you know, whatever. So I don't think it's um, completely unreasonable, but I know people, some people do way less than that. Um, okay, and then for our sinking funds, 
or no, for our debt, we should be doing 1,284 dollars and 93 cents. This does include our minimum payments. Our minimum payments are the 135.60 for Wells Fargo student loans and then 257.24 for Great Lakes. So this includes our those minimum payments and our snowball amount. For sinking funds, they're gonna be pretty steep this month because I've got some annual subscriptions I'm gonna to do to save money. And then I'm also going to be putting like $300 towards car maintenance because we're gonna take our other car into the shop this month. Um, I have no idea what's going on out there. Sorry if you can hear my daughter like screeching like a pterodactyl. Um, but yeah, we're putting $300 towards car maintenance this month because we do have to take our Dodge Journey in and um, I know that the alignment needs to be changed and they always find something, it seems like. So our sinking funds are gonna be $919 this month. And then for unbudgeted, we do not budget anything for that. So if you add all of this up, which I already have, <laughs> it will equal this estimate income. And that is considered a zero-based budget. And um, you're basically giving every single dollar in assignment. So that is that. And, um, and just in regards to the zero-based budget too, that doesn't mean you're taking your checking account down to zero. Um, we do keep a $100 buffer in our checking account currently. Um, for those like just in case situations where maybe our electricity bill is a little higher than we expected or you know we have just something come up like these um, unbudgeted items sometimes come up where I just forget something. I'm hoping between you know having our um, cash categories and our sinking funds like that will be kind of a catch-all for everything um, and our cash categories are going to be grocery, household, family fun, um, and then of course our pocket money and Madeline. So all of that will be in cash. For our gas and car washes, um, we have a separate checking account that we use just for gas and for car washes. So that just helps me kind of separate it from everything else. All of our sinking funds do go into a separate savings account. And then when we need the money, we just transfer it over and um, like withdraw it in cash for a lot of different categories. Um, I like using cash because it just makes it really easy to track how much you have obviously in your budget all you have to do is just open your wallet and count the cash and you can see exactly how much you have so that's kind of why I like to um, do that I will be breaking out my sinking funds in a separate video so stay tuned for that but that is pretty much it for this video you guys I hope that you enjoyed it if you did please give it a thumbs up and be sure to subscribe and hit the bell notification button to catch all of my future videos if you're interested in anything you saw here today the stickers from Erin Condren the planner I have everything linked in the description box down below along with a link that will get you a $10 off coupon code on your Erin Condren order. So really cool. You can save some money there. Um, and if you have any questions or comments at all, definitely leave those down below. I do try to respond, you know, as quickly as I possibly can. So that is pretty much it. I will chat with y'all later. Bye.